loves welcome to the cosmopolitan allure channel this is the month of may and this is the emerald look how do we like it you guys so um as usual this is the fifth installment in the gemstone birthday month series so happy birthday and happy belated birthday to all of my may babies out there i hope you have and i hope you had a wonderful birthday and um if nobody else tells you happy birthday then hear from me happy birthday so this is the look that i created for the month where the gemstone is emerald green is my favorite color so i had to do a little extra jewish for this month um, I have nude nails this month because since green is so prominent, I wanted all the focus to be on green. And since it's my favorite color, I just had to go over the top. So if you are interested in how I achieved this look, please keep on watching. All right, you guys, so we're going to jump right in. This month for May, I feel like doing an extravagant look. So we're going to keep it moving. Um... We know our routine at this point, so we're going to start with the Fenty Lip Scrub. I typically alternate between the YLS one and the Fenty Lip Scrub. It just kind of depends on what's at my hand at the moment and what state my lips are in. Um, as of late, my lips have been extremely chapped, so I'm going to opt with the scrub. Um, for primer today, we're going to use the Tatcha Silk canvas and i'm going to use the liquid form um i haven't used this in a while you guys so um all of these products i'll be using today are not necessarily new i think the only one that i haven't tried is the um concealer that i'm going to use today and i saw um nicole concilio use this in one of her videos so um, I thought I would try it. Can you guys believe that it is May already? That this will be, I think, my seventh video that I've um, done for YouTube this year. And it's definitely a learning experience. <laughs> um... I feel like I've gotten better at it over time. At first, when I first started recording, I didn't even realize how to shoot in landscape mode. I was shooting in portrait mode. So, you know, I've gotten better along the way. And I'm just going to chit chat with you while the Tatcha has a moment to set into the skin. You know, I like to let my primers, you know, soak into the skin. Mm, my lip is tingling a little bit right in here, though. Don't like that. Um, so it's definitely a learning curve, definitely something different than what I'm used to. And even though I haven't been making content for a long time, I understand now when the, um, other people that I follow on YouTube, you know, talk about being consistent and struggling to be consistent and put out content because I still work a full-time job outside of this. This is pretty much like a labor of love and me just wanting to share my opinions and some of my makeup techniques with you all. So, um, and it's hard. Like I typically film on the weekends. I don't usually film during the week and on my weekends, I want to not do anything at all. I want to just, you know, be all right. So I think this has had enough time to set into the skin today. I'm going to be using LYS or Love Yourself um, foundation in the color TN6. I actually really like this foundation. Um, I will, sorry, I just kind of segue out of that. But um, so I'm actually going to do, like I was saying before, squirt out two pumps on my hand. And as you can see, the consistency is really liquidy. It's more of a thin formula. So even though I want to have an extravagant look on my face, I'm not really trying to have a super thick amount of foundation on today. But yeah, it definitely is. Um, it does take time and dedication to do 
YouTube videos and content. So while I definitely haven't been in the game or post as frequently as people who have made a career out of being a YouTuber, I do understand um, how taxing it can be to be consistent. So, but I do actually enjoy this. It's really just getting over the hump and doing it. So once I start filming, I have no problems. But when I'm laying in my bed, I'm like, oh, I'm enjoying the weekend. It's Saturday. I don't have anything to do. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I got to film. That was my promise to myself, my New Year's resolution last year is that I'm going to start my YouTube channel. I'm going to share my makeup techniques and I'm going to be consistent, which is why I'm glad that BH Cosmetics came out with their, and I really like this brush. Um, I've talked about it before. This is my It Cosmetics. Um, What was it? it says Heavenly Lux on it, but um, it's the Love Is Foundation brush with confetti in it. Um, it's no longer available in the U.S. You have to go to Cult Beauty and order it. Um, I will put a link below on where to on the link to where to purchase it. But this is one of the reasons I love the LYS formula. Even though it's thin, it gives me coverage. It looks very skin like. And I definitely like the way this looks on top of the um, Tatcha Silk Canvas um, primer. Ow. Ooh. The brush just went in my eye, y'all. That was so painful. Whew. <laughs> but, um, but yes, it's like it was confirmation for, for me about being consistent because... I had always said, yeah, I want to do my YouTube channel. And everybody's like, what's stopping you? And I'm like, well, I work full time. They're like, that's not an excuse, you know. And I was just like, <sighs> so I said this year, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be consistent. And back to BH Cosmetics releasing their birthstone um, gemstone palettes every month. And I was like, you know what? I feel like that's confirmation that I'm supposed to be doing this because that will keep me committed to doing at least one video a month where that's not necessarily overwhelming. You have at least 28 days to 31 days within a month's time frame to film something so you won't be overwhelmed. Even if you film it, you know, in the beginning of the month, you have until the end of the month to edit it and post it. So, um, the only thing about it is because of the pandemic, um, it takes a long time for the palettes to get here. I feel like the mail hasn't gotten back up to speed from being behind so much. Well, certain brands haven't, you know, Amazon, excuse me, Amazon has always been doing relatively well throughout the whole pandemic. That was like a lifesaver for the majority of the people. Excuse me. And so the new product, and I apologize, I'm like switching back and forth in between my commentary, but I don't want the video to be too long. So this is the new concealer that I wanted to try. Um, it is Kimchi Chic. And I believe this is a brand from one of the contestants on RuPaul's Drag Race. And so when I saw Nicole Concealio use this in one of her videos, I was like, oh, this looks like it's, you know, it'll work really well. And she said it was a very hydrating formula so i was like you know what i'm gonna try it, it wasn't expensive at all this was um i think 14 dollars. so the only thing about it is that it's online so i wasn't really sure which um color to get and this might actually be a little bit too light for me so i'm gonna try it really lightly with this formula i don't necessarily have any plans to look like a light bright today but um, but it's simple enough to use. And I, I actually like um, concealers in this type of um, packaging where it's like a squeezy tube with a brush. Because, you know, in worst case situations, if you were to, you know, forget a brush or something like that, you can kind of use the tip of the brush here to blend it in. Okay, that might be a stretch, but... Um, I like it. It's very easy to use. 
And with this one, you'll actually be able to use all the product in here. Like once it starts getting to the bottom, you can clip it off and kind of scoop it out. So I feel like I'll get my money's worth. Even though it's only $14, there are some, you know, concealers that come in the little, you know, with the doe foot applicator that you squeeze in. And it's just like, I know I'm not going to get my money's worth because half of this product, well, I won't say half, but a good amount of this product, I'm not going to be able to get out because I can't maneuver the doe foot inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Beauty Bakery sponge and I'm, I'm going to use the bottom. I've been doing uh, makeup videos. I had to film um, a makeup tutorial yesterday for um my mary kay team and i just did not have time and then i went out to brunch with my brother and sister and sister-in-law yesterday and put on a face right behind that took off the one i did for mary kay because it was a very evening look and then um, oh i like that it blended out very well i actually really i was scared this color might be a little bit too light but it blended in seamlessly and when you um if you go on the website and sign up you know you get I think it's either a 10% or 15% off on your first purchase so it won't even be I don't even think I actually paid the $14 I think it might have been like $12 or $10 or something like that so very affordable and I am super impressed with this and like I'll tell people this I think it's nice to have things in glass packaging and all that. But in all honesty, I just want travel friendly packages. And I would I wish brands would give you the option to have minis. Even if if I was to start my own makeup brand and I don't see that in the future, but I'm not gonna knock it out the park, <laughs> but um, or I'm not gonna, you know, throw it out the window. I don't know if I would actually like make full size items I think mine would all be like travel size because I remember when I went to one of my friends weddings in Puerto Rico and I'm just bopping all over the place you guys I, I didn't finish any thoughts that I've started today um when I went to my friend's wedding in Puerto Rico you know that you can't have more than I think the items can't be more than like one ounce or something like that and the foundation that I wanted to use was more than like one fluid ounce. And I was like, so then I had to get travel containers and then squeeze some out. And I was like, I don't want to do all this to travel. I just want to take my items and put them in a bag and go. I don't want to have to transfer. I don't want to have to spend money on buying travel containers or, you know, I, I don't know. I just want it to be much easier. <laughs> so, and like a lot of times, especially when you are a person who does like YouTube reviews on makeup and stuff like that, you accumulate so much makeup and it takes a long time to go through um, items. Like for me, I don't wear makeup every day. Even when I go into the office, some days I don't wear foundation. I might just wear like a tinted moisturizer or something like that or just squeeze like a drop into my lotion and put it on my face. I don't go to work with the beat face. So foundation lasts a very, very, very long time for me. And most of the time it will get old and have to be thrown out before I actually go through it. I will say my foundation that I feel like I will actually use all of it is going to be my Pat McGrath one because that is the one I consistently find myself reaching out to in a quick fix or whatever the case may be. I grab Pat McGrath because I know it's going to be a match. I know my skin is going to like it. The close second for it right now is um, the LYS Beauty Foundation that I use today. They have very, very, very similar finishes and Pat McGrath is considered luxury. I think that foundation is $65, $65 or $68. Well, the LYS foundation is $22. Comes in a glass bottle, all of that. And it looks very luxury, but it's not considered a luxury brand. It's considered a clean brand. 
um, with, you know, good things in it, um, ashwagandha, turmeric, you know, items that are going to be very good for your skin. So, you know, I, I like both of them very evenly. And the only thing I, I like the fact that they come in glass bottles for the aesthetic, like if you're putting it on your counter or because I like to display my makeup. That's something that I really, really like. Um, this looks so nice. And I'm just looking in the mirror here. I like the color. I feel like I could have actually went, um, maybe I could just put on another one. Because like anybody, like you guys who follow me know that I don't put a lot of, um, concealer up under my eyes like I don't really have bad dark circles so I don't have a need to wear like a significant amount of concealer but what I do like about this is other than the way it melted into my skin I like this color it looks in the packaging I was like I don't know about this color. I think it might be too light, but it just melted so seamlessly into the skin. So I'm putting on a second layer just because I'm wondering, like, did I just not put on enough or does it just really melt into the skin like this? Like, is this ha like what happened? <laughs> so and I'm always on the hunt for different concealers because sometimes you just want something you can drop in your bag. Like for me, I would not put my Mac, my Pat McGrath concealer in my bag for work. Like there are days, you know, when you're rushing and you leave home and you don't have time to do anything. You wake up late. And like I said, I don't wear like foundation and concealer and all of that on a regular basis. I wear a lip color, some mascara, and on a good day, you might get some eyeliner, but I do like blush. So, um, but if I do have dark circles, I feel like I can see them. I see them more when I go into the office since we've been working from home. Even though I've worked more hours working from home, I don't have as many dark circles as I did when I was actually going into the office. And I really 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 like that so me personally I would prefer to work from home a lot of people are tired of working from home they need that time to get out of the house you know if you have kids have a spouse you need that time away that me time I'm single and I don't have any kids so for me I'm enjoying working from home I've always been a homebody anyway and have wanted to work from home and it wasn't an option unless it was like the inclement weather situation you know it was dangerous to come in the office so i have been loving this i am at my best optimal health since i've been working from home i actually get up from my desk and walk around instead of like in the office i would sit at my desk for like six hours and realize oh my goodness i haven't gotten up i haven't gotten anything to eat like i just when i go into my zone to work i work and I don't like being bothered. I don't like being disturbed when I'm working on something, especially if I have a deadline. Because I'm not a person who waits to the last minute to finish something when it comes to work. I try to pace myself accordingly so I don't have to rush and get anything done. And, um, and once I go into that zone, I don't like being disrupted from that zone and when you know when you're in the office people will walk up to your desk and ask you questions and I don't have a problem with that but it's just like you know when you're focused on something I just don't like my concentration to be broken so at home I feel like I've been way more productive nobody can walk over to you and kind of disturb you from what you're doing they have to like ping you on communicator and with communicator I still answer questions but I don't feel like my concentration excuse me gets broken as much as like somebody physically walking over to your desk and I have to physically stop what I'm doing on the computer and turn and converse with them where when somebody, you know, pings you on the computer, you're still on the computer and you can answer their question, but it doesn't kind of just stop you in the middle of what you, it stops you, but it's not like a hard stop. It's not like I'm turning my attention away and addressing you in person and doing all that. So 
I much prefer for me to work from home. I feel like I'm more productive and I actually feel like I'm more social working from home than I am in the office. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? I know. Um, Cause like I said, I'm so work oriented at work. Like give me an assignment. I'll do what I need to do. Give me a project. I'll make it, make it by the deadline or before the deadline. But you know, when you're working from home, you have to stop and have those meetings. So right now today for my um, under eye setting powder, I'm going to use the LYS triple fix translucent powder in the color brilliance or banana. And um, I really like this setting powder, but yeah, I'm here for this concealer. I would 100% recommend it. Um, it blended out like a dream. It melted into the skin. I see the color, you know, the highlight from the contour, but it's not super major. Like, I really enjoy this. It was very movable. It didn't remove any of my foundation or anything like that. And I'm pretty sure I could get heavier coverage, but for me, like I said, I don't use a lot of concealer in general, so it's right up my alley. So, and I mean, a drag queen created this, so you know they need their makeup to last and cover up what it needs to cover up. So I have no doubt that this will layer up much more heavy if you need it to. So, um. But anywho, so yeah, so, you know, when now we have to have like, you know, daily conversations with our managers and talk about what we're working on and going over the information that you turn in, you know. So I feel like I'm closer with my supervisor now being out of the office because we have to make the effort to interact with each other. And I also got a promotion um, while we have been working from home so you know in that transition my duties have changed and you know it's my first time being in a actual manager's position even though i've been doing managerial work for years now but to actually have the title so you know when people give you the title and you actually accept it they expect more from you like i said even though i've been doing the work way before now um and so I'm just setting my face in all the areas that I highlighted with the concealer. And um, so my supervisor is, you know, helping me transition. Well, it's been a while since I had the promotion, but she helped me transition from being so technical and doing the work and to how to delegate work to people. Now, like the person who backfilled my old position, I'm technically a super, well, a manager over that person who backfilled my position, essentially. So, you know, being able to delegate work and not necessarily having to get into the weeds unless you have to. But I, I'm not a manager who's hands off in a sense. I like to still not micromanage, but stay up with what's going on occasionally jump in and do some of the work so i still stay cognizant of what's going on how to do the work if there's any errors and issues like i'm still close enough to the process so <clears throat> i can fully comprehend what an issue is because i think one of the things that i disliked is to have a manager who tells you to do something and then when the system breaks or you can't do it you have to spend hours trying to explain to them why it's not working because they don't know the process. Oh, so for contour today or bronzer, I'm going to use the LYS No Limits Matte Bronzer in the Courage, excuse me, in the color Courage, which is considered for tan um, complexions. And um, looks like this. I've done a video on LYS before, so that's why I'm not necessarily... Um, showing you the pans this time around because it's a whole video on them and as usual i'm going right above my trachis here and bringing it in to the end of my eye right here and then i'm just going to buff it into the skin in circular motions and i'm using my old bh cosmetics brush that is definitely on its last leg i keep saying every time i use it i'm going to replace it and i never do because 
it still works, even though. But until this top gets to a point where I can't put it back on, it's still going to be in use. Anywho, like I said, I want to do a more dramatic look today. So I'm going to go try to go heavier on my contour or bronzer. Well, contour and bronzer shouldn't be used interchangeably in terms because they do different things. But this is marketed as a bronzer. But for me, the color is more on the neutral side, which is reminiscent of a contour to me. So, But I'm just going to do it heavier today because I want a more dramatic look. But um, what was I saying? Uh, now I've got sidetracked. Um, don't remember what I was saying. Backtracking. Oh, managers. But yeah, um, when you spend so much time trying to explain to them, you know, an error and why you can't do your work or why the system is broken, how it's behaving, and you waste so much time trying to explain because they're so far removed from the process that when you encounter an error, they don't, they can't even tell you, they, they can't comprehend what you're saying. They just know who they need to escalate it to. And I don't like managers like that. I'm not saying that you need to do the process every single day, but you should be, if everybody on your team called out sick, you should be able to know your process and be able to go in and jump in and keep, everything from falling flat for that one day while everybody is out of the office. And I think the expectation of managers these days is for you to ensure that you manage your people and, you know, you manage their vacation days so that if you have two associates up under you, one of them is always going to be in the office or if both of them is out, you know, it might be around a holiday time and, it's going to be slow or something like that. And I don't agree with that. Well, that's part of the job of being a manager. Absolutely manage the people that you supervise, but you need to know your process and you need to know how to jump in and do it. You need to understand if there's an error, what's going on. So that's just me personally. That's what I've always looked for in a manager. And what I'm doing now is I'm just going in with the brush and I'm going up under my jawline here to shave off some facial pounds. So it'll look like I'm a little bit smaller than what I am. And just giving dimension back to my face. So, um, but yeah, so... I feel like for me, this has been very good and I do not want to go back into the office because I'm afraid all of the habits that I've, you know, acquired at home as far as making sure I take my two 15 minute breaks and making sure I take a lunch break, making sure I eat three meals a day that I'm healthy, you know, trying to minimize my stress. I'm scared that it's going to go out the window once I go back into the office and I'll fall back into those habits where I'm sitting at my desk for hours or I'm not taking my break because I'm so focused on work. So for me, it's good to work from home. Not everybody is an in-office person. So, and I'm definitely not an in-office person. I know that about myself. So, um... Yeah. But anywho, but back to what I was saying in the beginning of the video. So I'm just using a brush to contour my nose. Um, I still have my little nose contour brush. I don't know where it is right at this moment, but I've kind of just gotten used to kind of maneuvering my brushes now to be able to just put product on the corner of it like this and to trace my nose just like this. So I don't have so much product on there that I have to worry about, you know, wiping so much off. So, and that just comes with practice and comfort. Um, but yeah, back to what I was saying in the beginning. Um, being consistent. Yeah, it's, it's. It, it can be very, it can be very um, 
hard to be consistent. And like I said, I'm not, I don't even do this full time. This is literally like a once a month thing or if I get like a new palette that I just absolutely love or something like that, I definitely come in and I'm just going in making sure that I keep my line straight on my nose so it doesn't like, you know, go out like that. I want to keep my nose in like this. And um yeah. So you know, it's kind of a learning curve. So today I'm going to try the Kosas um cloud set in the color pillowy. And I'm going to use this as an all over um setting powder and this is what the color looks like. So um, it looks a little light, but because it is being used as like an all over facial powder just to like blend and set everything, um, it doesn't matter to me that the color is lighter. I just need it to go in and set. And this is supposed to give you like a natural um, glow to the skin. It's not like a matte setting powder. It's supposed to give you a natural skin like glow which is i guess the look i'm going for today so we shall see i definitely like that nothing is being disturbed on my face i can still see the bronzer my highlighted area is still visible um sometimes when you put these um facial powders on and you set your face you can see where it like lightens you up some, not like super noticeable, but when you're doing your own makeup, you can definitely see when your skin goes a little bit lighter. So, all right. So I like that. I feel like I look very airbrushed. I like that. And then for setting spray, I didn't lay any out. I'm going to use the Sweet Gray Setting Spray from Beauty Bakery. So, as usual, I'm just going to shake it up. And then I'm going to spray the bottom of my Beauty Bakery sponge. It looks like it's time to replace this. It's getting little rips and stuff in it. Because typically, after I do my makeup, every single time I wash the sponge. So, this sponge has seen super 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 clean cleaning sessions quite frequently and I have you know done makeup outside of these videos that I film with you guys so it gets washed pretty regular I think this is the first time where I've done makeup like two days back to back and I didn't um wash the sponge so I got a little bit of a um we got a little bit of a break this time around, but I don't like that because I feel like it's filled with bacteria and I'm not here for that. So I have sensitive skin personally. And like, I feel like I say this in every video, like I work with clients and do freelance makeup. So I don't want to develop habits while I'm not seeing clients that will be hard to break when I start freelancing makeup again. So that's why I'm very cognizant about certain things that I do. I just don't want to form that bad habit and just automatically do it. I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I did this with a client. So um, that's one of the things I consistently think about. But um, yeah, I, I like doing this YouTube thing. I think I learn a lot about myself in the process. I learn new things because I even though I like technology, it's more game-based technology and not necessarily like keeping up with like TikTok and Instagram and all of those types of things. Like I'm not on TikTok. I most likely will not get on TikTok. Um, Instagram takes up enough time on its own and I'm not going to give my additional time to another social media platform. I mean, I'm already on YouTube, which is also considered a social media platform, but I look at this a little bit differently in the sense that it's more of me sharing knowledge with you um, and some conversation with you to a certain extent. 
um, versus like with Instagram and TikTok. Those are essentially moments in time in a person's life. So, um, and you can scroll through in an hour. You can look at so many pictures and get different ideas and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I have no interest to be on TikTok <laughs> to have another hour of my life sucked away in looking at other things that people do randomly. It's not a bad thing, but I just want to use my time to do something more constructive. And that's like a personal preference. I know a lot of people, and I'm using the Fenty Beauty MVP brow, and I think this is um, brown black. But what I like about this color is that even though it's brown black, it's not um, super dark. So when I go in to fill in my eyebrows, I don't feel like I'm giving myself like a super dark brow because it's not that dark. So I know a lot of people are like, no, I need the pigment. I think they have a color darker than this. I think they have like off black um, after this. So this isn't the darkest color that they have. But um, yeah, I just want to use my time to do something more constructive. So, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. So. I feel like Instagram and though uh, TikTok are more of like personal snapshots into people's lives and what they do, what they like, which is cool. Now, I know people put vlog vlogs and stuff on YouTube as well, but for the most part, I don't really look at people's vlogs like that on YouTube. I just look at um, videos, people's reviews on different things. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much. And I used it to learn how to do cake decorations. So for me, when I use... When I use YouTube, is to try to learn how to do something I didn't know how to do. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I want to be extra with my eyebrows today and kind of shape them a little bit. That's not something that I typically do. So, I'm just going to take this um, concealer. And I'm not squeezing anything new out. I'm literally just taking whatever's left over on the little brush here and going around and just trying to give myself a little sharp eyebrow and this is something you guys know I never do I never typically give this much attention to my eyebrows but today I just I don't know this is what I felt like doing so I'm going to do it I feel like I want a specific shape today. So that might be why I'm more inclined to do it. And that's one thing like I actually really like about this is that I can go in and like I said, I'm not, I'm not squeezing out any product at all. I'm just using whatever was left on the brush. And I'm going to take my sponge here and just press that in and most of the time when I would do this I would not use concealer I would use foundation but my foundation since I didn't put my foundation on with a sponge today I used a brush um, it would be a little bit more difficult with the shape of that brush to go in with the foundation and oops and try to fix this the way I want it to. So I'm just going to use the sponge here and just go in. And I'm literally using like the pointed edge of it to go in and try to blend this in and clean it up. Yeah, I'm really here for this concealer because this color, I can see it, but it's not so... 
it's not so different that I can't blend it in without it with it being a hassle and that's one of the things that I like that's one of the things that I do like about it So I could have used more concealer to make it more exact. It didn't give me the exact shape I was looking for, but I was still really light handed. Like I said, I didn't squeeze any more product. I just used what was left there. So but I do feel like they're more exact. So cool yay so now for oh let me go ahead and prime my eyes so i'm going to use the fenty beauty um amplifying eye primer as my base for today and i'm actually excited about today's look when i opened the bh cosmetics palette when i got it in the mail i actually I didn't like the color story, but I immediately had a look in mind. So I think that's hilarious. Um, I felt like for, for Emerald to be in May, that the color story was really dark for the summertime. I thought the palette would be um, much more brighter, but it's really heavy. It, it gives me fall vibes. So, um, I was kind of like, oh, all right. So without further ado, this is the BH Cosmetics Emerald for May um, birthstone palette. And this is what it looks like. Oop, I forgot to take the plastic off. So this is what this month looks like. And do you guys see what I'm saying? I feel like this is giving me all like fall vibes here. It's really dark for it to be um, a May palette. And I just turned um, my social light down some so you could see the color better. But right here we have Emerald. Then we have Total Package, Restless, Hard Worker, Stubborn, Artsy AF and high spirit as always we're gonna go ahead and swatch these and one of the reasons i do swatches is because i like to have an idea of what they're gonna look like on me so this is emerald and i'm gonna swatch that again because i thought this was gonna be much darker that's super green okay yeah i thought that was gonna be as dark as it looked in the pan I'm going to go into Stubborn right here, this brownish color, okay, and then I'm going to go into Total Package up here, so this looks to be like a gold champagne like color, mm -hmm. that one is true. Then I'm going to go into, this is like a Mm, it looks like a mossy type green or army fatigue green. Let's see. Yeah, it's like a green brown. Then I'm going to go into Artsy AF, which is kind of like a shimmer green. They, these two almost look exactly the same. So this just looks like a brighter green. And this looks like a hair darker, but they almost look exactly alike. And green is my favorite color. I like every shade of green. Chartreuse is my exact shade of green. That's my favorite, but I'm not that picky. If you give me something green, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to go into this um, bronzy brown color. So this has a little bit of shimmer in the brown. So I actually really like this color a lot.
So I don't know if you can see any reflex in it. I can definitely see the gold reflex in it. So I like that color. And then last but not least, the shimmer color that they have in the palette every month. This month is High Spirit. And this is like a orange, silver, and brown. And I'm just going to slide that right here. So I really like this color. All right. So the look that I had planned to do, I got to rethink it because these colors don't look like they look in the pan too much. <sighs> mm. All right. So I'm literally just going to go with the flow here um, and see what happens. I'm going to try to recreate the look that I had thought about in my head. Just don't know what it's going to look like since the colors don't exactly, they're not exactly as they appear in the pan. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. So, I'm going to go into the color Stubborn. In the pan, it looks like a burgundy color, but it's actually more of like a brown it's kind of like maroon but browner and I'm just taking my mini blend, blend, blending brush by colored rain and I'm just taking this and packing it into the crease here All I know is that I wanted this extravagant green wing on my eye. That's all that I could imagine when I saw this palette. Um, yeah, that's the only thing that I kept seeing is this oversized green wing for no reason. So that is going to be what we do today. Um, all of these colors in here are just really going to be like fillers in the background um so we shall see what I will say though is this when you use a smaller brush and this is just in general um these colors seem to be much more pigmented then the other palettes, well, this color in particular seems to be more pigmented. And I'm not mad about that at all. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to use the smaller blending brush, simply because I wanted to get some good color payoff. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to take the small blending brush, and it doesn't have anything on it, and I'm just going to go in and just diffuse this color some because I just want it to have dimension but I don't want it to be so stark I want it to be dramatic without being so stark because I know that we're going to have a lot of colors on my eye if this goes according to how I see it in my head and I don't want the colors to look too muddy and on my complexion I feel like I have to be careful with colors like this like my browns that are kind of like red maroons because they can easily go to making me look like I have a bruise <laughs> on my complexion so that's another reason why I'm making an effort to kind of diffuse this out I don't want it to be so heavy where it looks muddy and like I had a I had a fight so all right and then what I think I'm going to do, I know that I'm going to use um, High Spirit to um, this color right here. I'm going to line the bottom of my lash line with this color. Um, so I don't want to use it on top. Um, I'm going to go in with Total Package here. And I'm going to put that in the inner tear duct area. And so I'm going to use my flat shader brush, which I just, okay, here we go. The Colored Rain Flat Shader Brush. And actually, you know what? 
we're going to come back to total package. I'm actually going to go in with, mm, I'm going to try Restless and see what this color looks like. And I'm just going to put that on the inner third here. Okay. That's not bad. I feel like on the eye, it looks how it looks in the pan. And I understand why people say like, you know, doing a color swatch on the arm, really, there's no point because once you put it on the eye, it doesn't necessarily translate. And I feel like I'm finding that to be with these colors. I know I've done swatches before with these palettes and they came off just like how they came off on my arm. There really wasn't um, any color payoff to a certain extent. My eyes still watering over here. Um, they really don't have that strong color payoff. But this one seems to actually be true to the pan color once you actually put it on the eye. So I'm not mad about that at all. And I'm just going to wipe off this brush. And I'm just using the um, BH Cosmetics. This is like a brush cleaner. So that way, and if you don't have this, you can use a paper towel. I just use it because I have it. Um, and that cuts down on how many brushes you're using. I don't like to use different brushes and all of that. So I'm going to go in and pick up Artsy AF here. And I'm just going to slide and press that down in the middle. Okay. I'm gonna pick up a good, oop, what's that fallout? So that one had some fallout, no, okay. I wasn't expecting it to have fallout, so let me just press. And I just feel it. It's like falling on my cheek. Luckily, it's not sticking, so that's good. And I'm just going to press. All right. And I'm going to do the same on the, uh oh, it's breaking apart in the pan here. So I'm just tapping off the excess and I'm just going to press and pull so instead of going down like I was before I'm going to press and pull like this to try to alleviate any fallout and I'm just going to blend that into the muted green there I feel like this could have used like another color like this other than this one here. I feel like this one could have used another color because it's so dark. So you really don't have a choice but to do like a dark look for the most part, unless you just like cover your whole eye right here in total package. So, but anywho, and then again, I'm going to wipe my brush off. I think this brush cleaner did a good job for it to have like glitter and stuff on it. It cleaned pretty well. And then I'm going to go into, oops, sorry guys, with the mirror up there. I'm going to go into the color Hard Worker, which is this brown bronze color. And I'm just going to put that on the outer corner and give myself a V. Well, that's what I plan to do. Hopefully that's what ends up happening. So I'm actually going to start here extend that wing there and bring it over well actually that's not what I plan to do because I was going to do that with the green itself so let me just pack this color in actually stop getting ahead of myself here 
and I actually don't think that's gonna work you guys because this brown is not super pigmented so I want it to come out as dark on my eye as it is in the pan but okay there we go I, I mean it's pretty but I feel like this is one of those eyeshadow looks that you have to look at outside in the sunlight if that makes sense like in this lighting I can see it but when I actually look down in my mirror down here at the bottom, and that's what I'm doing when I'm um, like leaning forward. So when I'm looking at my mirror in the bottom, I can actually really see all of these colors. But when you're looking at them like this, you can't really, you can't really see them like this. So I'll make sure that I take a picture outside in the sunlight so you guys can really see what these colors look like and I am having quite a bit of fallout down here so I'm just taking my brush I'm having quite a bit of fallout so I'm just taking my brush and kind of flicking it away um, with my big shader brush here so hmm so yeah so as always we have our little pencil brush so a oh, precise liner brush excuse me from colored rain that I feel like we use in every single video because I love it and it does what it's supposed to do so you guys know the drill. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the setting spray, the sweet gray sweating, sweating spray, <laughs> setting spray and go ahead and spray my brush. And I'm going to go into the color emerald here and pick it up. And I'm going to literally just blob it all on my brush here. I'm literally just twisting and rolling, drop off any excess, and I'm literally going to start lining my eyes. As you can see, I already started with the brown, but. Okay, wonderful. Fantastic. And see, that's why I was saying that these two colors look exactly the same here. So the one that's actually in the center of my eye is the Artsy AF color. But the color that I'm lining my eye with is Emerald. So to me, those colors are twinning right now. And I feel like it could have been replaced with another color that would give us um that would give us some color payoff there. And I'll go back and fix my little other triangular snafu that I did earlier. Well, you know what? I might just make it a... Hmm. I'm just going to fill it in, actually. And I'm just picking up more product. And I'm just going to take it to where my eye stops. And I'm just going to fill it in. I don't want to connect the whole color because I don't want to lose that brown that we have. But just in the little V shape right on the outside i'm going to fill that in
because I still want the brown to be seen because I think it's a pretty color. And it's overcast outside today, so I was hoping it was going to be really sunny. Maybe by the time I go back outside, it'll be sunny, but I don't know if the true colors will be picked up. I hope so, though. So now we're going to do my struggle eye. And like I said on this, I like, I don't want to cover up the brown. So I'm literally just going to darken this line up right here, going into the eye. And I'm just going to fill in the outer part of the wing so that brown can still show through. And so I'm just going to go in and I'm going to redistribute that, um, what color was that? The stubborn color here. And I think these names are really fitting for the people who are in the month of May. Everybody I know for the month of May, just, they all have stubborn personalities. All of them. Excuse me, not a single exception. So, um, yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off my precision liner brush and then we're going to go in and we're going to we're going to line with the high spirit glitter color. Then we're going to go in with the champagne color total package and go in and fill in the front. And then I'll go back over at the end with the um with the um stubborn color to make sure we keep our dimension so i just cleaned off my brush and resprayed it i'm gonna go in with total package here i feel like the look is looking a little flat it's looking very dark right now so we have to bring some light back into the look and so i'm just going to go right here and just go in that first inner third I'm gonna actually do a little peek I'm gonna bring it in farther so I have an extended wing in the front and just feel that in a little bit it's not even on the first third. I would have to like dissect the eye into like four parts and that would be like the first fourth of the eye to blend into that green. I'm just gonna take my finger and kind of pat it and I might have to use, I can't really get too tight in there with my nails on right now. And since we're doing so much dramatic color on the eye, I wanted my nails to be neutral. This time when I saw the palette, I was like, oh, this palette is so dark. Cause usually my nails typically match whatever the color of the month is, but I didn't want to go overboard with the dark color. Even though green is my favorite color, I just, 
I'm just not a fan of this palette, you guys. And apologies, my eyes are just watering all over the place still from, it's just watering from when I poked myself earlier, so. But for these palettes to be $9, I do think it's a steal, to be honest. And to have a palette dedicated to your birthday gives people something to look forward to. You know, I, I'm looking forward to mine for September. I'm curious to know what colors they're going to curate for the month of September. I'm very curious. And usually these colors are much easier to pick up with setting spray. Um, some people would say to use um, glitter glue, but I'm just not a fan of putting glue, even though I wear fake eyelashes. Um, I don't want to use a glue for glitter to... Um, I don't want to use a glitter glue for this specifically. I don't know why, but glitter glue just doesn't sit well with me while I can put lash glue on my eye. It makes absolutely no logical sense, but that's just how I feel. So again, just picking up the color and dragging it across my lash line. And it could be because this one is lighter. The other palettes have darker color. Um, so they showed up much better. It could be because this one is a lighter base that I don't feel like I'm getting the pigment that I would usually get. And so I'm just going over it multiple times. I'm trying to build up this color so we can see it. Okay, there we go. I think that did it for me. I can actually see everything now. This one just took some time to build. No. So we had a little glitter situation over here. I'm going to get a Q-tip here. Y'all is sticking where I don't want it to stick. Let me take some set and spray to see if I can. get it to stick to the set and spray and slide off. Okay, that's working. So side trick, you guys. Try to get some setting spray down there and get it to stick on the set and spray. Okay, I can live with that. It's still some little... It's still some little flex down there, but I can live with it. Here we go. So, I've heard people say all types of things. You have to use tape to get it off. And, oh, I don't want to use tape. <laughs> so, set and spray did the trick. And so, like I said before, I'm just going to take this same blending brush that we had before. 
when we were diffusing the line and I'm just going to tap very lightly into the color stubborn and just try to go in and re-saturate this here because I don't want that color to get so lost in the sauce. Yeah, that works for me. I'm just lightly reintroducing that right back in here. Okay, wonderful. And so now I'm gonna do lashes. And for today's lashes, I'm going into my OG um, stash of lashes and use my Emmy lashes. I think this will give the drama that I'm looking for, but they won't be so overpowering. I probably need to order a new pair of these. <laughs> they look like they've been through the ringer. Okay. And I'm just going to apply another cup. Actually, I'm going to use the clear this time. I probably should have used clear the first time. So I inserted a picture of the Lily Lashes Power Liner in clear, which doubles as an eyelash adhesive and a um, eyeliner at the same time. It's one of my favorite products to use, easy use, and dries down super quickly. I forgot to explain it in the video, so I just put a picture of it there. Because this was my second time filming trying to do my lashes. The first pair of lashes was too over the top. And that's the thing with looks you guys and that's one of the reasons like I know some people wonder why my videos are so long but I think it's important for people who are learning to do makeup or just even curious about you know the time that it takes to do makeup or all of those to see the effort that goes into doing to doing makeup because sometimes Makeup is going to be like super simple, real quick, one and done. And then when you're trying to do like super dramatic. And that's one thing I had to realize. Like when I first started doing makeup and I would follow people's tutorial and I'd be like, okay, this tutorial is 20 minutes, but it just literally took me like 45 minutes to an hour to do this. And that's when I realized how much of the videos are edited because when you put on a lash, like I'm struggling with this lash now, but like I said, this is a old lash that is probably going in the trash when I'm done with this look. Um, like it's been through, it's on its last leg, so it's just barely hanging on. Um... It doesn't, it doesn't always go as planned. I gotta get a little close today. Okay, there we go. I wasn't sticking it in the right place, so it wasn't sticking. And today I might have to actually use a mirror. That's one of the personal things. Like when I see somebody doing their makeup and doing a tutorial, I don't, when they have to use like a mirror, I never understand. I'm like, why are you using a mirror? And I see now why people use a mirror because today, lashes were cutting up okay there we go I was like I know I know how to put on lashes and especially with this lash glue so the power liner is a lash glue and liner at the same time and I was like as many times as I have used this and it was no issue or anything like that why why today is it being so extra All right, there we go. All right, so I like this lash much better. I still have dramatics, but 
you can still see through the lash, see the liner, nothing got lost in the sauce. So, yay. So, and a lot of people say they're like, yeah, I like using older lashes. They just bend. And now I will say when I first started wearing lashes, I did not take care of my lashes. And like I said, these lashes I have had for a very, 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 very long time. So they are not in the best condition. I have tried to wash them and jack them up while I was trying to wash them. Sad story. So those were like my practice lashes when I first started doing lashes. And then I realized, like, oh, these are too dramatic for me. I'm never going to wear them. But I didn't want to buy any more because I already had these. So I kind of just treated them any type of way. <sighs> Young. Not knowing and understanding that there's a time and a place for everything. While I may not want to wear them today or tomorrow, there will be a time when I'm looking for a dramatic lash to serve a purpose. And I have treated these poor lashes so terribly that I'm ashamed. So, lashes, I apologize to you. I know that sounds crazy. It's not like a person and it doesn't have feelings, but still, I am actually ashamed at how poorly I have treated these lashes, but they're still holding up. Actually had to cut the footage for this lash because the lash had actually lost its shape and ripped. So it literally took me like 20 minutes to put on this one lash because it was in such poor condition. So, all right, we are back. After momentary struggles, we are back. Yay. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to mascara. So I'm going to be using the Maybelline Sky High Lashes. I actually really like this. And I really like how I can tackle my lower um my lower lash line with the wand i come to the conclusion that i have a wand type that i like and the wand type is really what makes or breaks a mascara for me so i like wands that have like little grippy teeth like this so i don't know if you can nope I don't know if you can see it, but it has little grippy teeth on it. And those mascaras do really well for my actual um, lashes. Um, it really grips on and gives me the length that I'm looking for because I think that's also one of the things that make or break mascaras. People don't necessarily know what they're looking for in a mascara until they find a mascara that does what they want it to do. So a lot of people want their lashes to curl. And I always thought that I want I want my lashes to curl. I want them to look pretty. But really what I like is length. All of the mascaras that I have gotten where my lashes look black and long is what I prefer. Excuse me. Excuse me. So if I get some curl with it, that's fine. But at the end of the day, I want my lashes to look long. And so I tend to gravitate towards those much more. So I'm just going to take the LYS um, Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in the color Inspire. So since the eyes are so dramatic, I still want it to be dramatic. So, um... I'm going to use on the lips and the cheeks today. I'm going peachy. I want to be over the top all the way. <laughs> I know it sounds random, but that's what you live life for. Life is supposed to be fun and enjoyable. 
absolutely we have to do serious things i'm not saying to negate you know being serious or anything like that but enjoy life take some risks be different be who you are and never be ashamed of who you are and what you like so because you are uniquely made to be you nobody on this earth is made to be like you think like you or replace you you were made to be you so don't hide that and so I felt like I wanted a peach lip even though it might clash but that's what I feel like wearing today so that's what I'm going to wear I'm just going to wipe off the Fenty lip scrub And I wouldn't imagine I have too much dead skin. My uh, lips have been scrubbed two days in the back, so they were probably more dry than anything. All right, so I want a pinky, peachy color. And I hit the camera, sorry, you guys. So it's kind of out of focus from where it was earlier. But I want like a pinky color to go with this, something to offset how dark it is. So I'm going to use Kylie Jenner Matte Liquid Lipstick and I'm going to use the color Kylie. Now they do come with a lip liner, but the lip liner, you really can't see it on me. So I'm just going to go in. And typically this is not a color that I would wear because this is a very cool tone color. But I wanted to try something different. I actually like how that looks with this color. And I've used this one other time with the lip liner and the lip liner was non-existent. So that's the reason I'm not even putting the lip liner that comes on with it. But the lip color is actually, I actually really like it. I just, it's just a color I have to be in the mood to wear this is not like a color i would just reach and pick up and be like yeah i'm gonna wear that and then because these dry down matte they can look a little stark on the lips so i'm gonna go over it with the fenty gloss bomb cream and this is in the color honey waffles so i'm just going to do this And it doesn't take away too much color. It just gives it some, some color and it warms it up just a bit. And then we're going to go in. So this is the Hi look. Guys. So this is the finished look. What do you think? I feel like I'm giving off French auntie vibes. Emerald is one of my favorite gemstones. So I already knew that this month I was going to be over the top. But tell me, how do you like it? I think it came out really beautiful. Even though we struggled to get here today. But you'll see that all in the video. But what do you think? With my little bow. As always, thank you so much for watching the video and supporting my channel. Um, please leave me a comment below if you like this content, if I left out something that you didn't see, or if you have any questions or concerns, please leave me a status below. If you're not a member of the Cosmopolitan Allure family, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. As always, thank you so much. Take care. I love you. I wish you nothing but happiness, love, health, and blessings your way. And <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful evening, day, night, whatever time you're watching this. I just hope that you have a fruitful, fruitful future. Bye, guys.